in one part of the city, same borough, a million dollars, in another, $40. And I could, you could blindfold me and I could take a dart and I could throw it anywhere in America and you will find racial disparity. All right, here's something our country has grown very comfortable with. Let me give you a, uh, just a picture of this. My favorite basketball player, I believe he's the best basketball player that's ever lived, is LeBron James. I know some of you have stopped watching this video after that. Work with me. Something that we've grown comfortable with in our country is this. LeBron James is exceptional as an athlete. He is exceptional as a human being. And he's exceptional in front of the media, in front of the cameras, and we love him. But when we look back at his story, he came out of a single parent home. He came out of a hard place. He had to move around a lot, lived there in Cleveland. And we say, man, that is a great story. And we could go from sport to sport with an exceptional athlete that performs well on the field. You think about um, in these huge stadiums in Alabama and Texas and Tennessee, all the players on the field are black. All the people in the stands are white. They celebrate them. Go, Bobby, go, go, go. Score the touchdown and we love it. And then at halftime, they have a little bit of a story they tell about the Heisman hopeful, how he came out of the ghetto and he tried to make it. And oh, but he's great on the football field. And everybody's got his shirt in the stands and they're waving his name. And we as a country call that a great story. Another black athlete that's made it and we love it. And that's why we love Oprah and we love Michael Jackson. And we love all these great stories. The thing is, is that we've grown comfortable with telling a story of coming from poverty to excellence, poverty to excellence. But part of the problem that we really struggle with as a country is we've gotten used to the fact that these folks keep coming out of bad situations. The word that we could use for that is racial disparity. Some would say racial inequity, but for us in this conversation, we'll say racial disparity. Now, the word disparity just means difference or a qualitative difference. And I could, you could blindfold me and I could take a dart and I could throw it anywhere in America and you will find racial disparity. Now, there's disparities in every country, in every nation. There's poor people and rich people. There's all types of different people. But the disparities in this country are racialized. I, um, I went, right when we moved to Brooklyn, I went to this one school, wonderful school. I mean, it was like Disney World, all the rides were free. I mean, the kids, you know, they, they, they do a carnival. It's big, it's amazing. They do plays, it's amazing. We go over and we have like a book fair, these amazing books. We have to pay all this money just to get in. It was amazing. We looked at the PTA budget. The PTA budget was a million dollars. Good Google movie. We thought to ourselves, this is just amazing. That was in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Well, two years later, after having been in this amazing school, we decided that we wanted to move our family to a different area because we were going to plant our church in a different area in Flatbush, Brooklyn. Move our kids to this different school. We get in there. My wife becomes a PTA president. I become the PTA vice president. We say, hey, we know that this school, it's a black and brown school. We understand that we may not have some advantages like other schools. So we want to get in there. We want to change things. We want to help things out. We want our carnivals to be great. We want our plays to be great. So we came with this energy of excellence. Parents wanted that too. One problem. We said, hey, let's see the budget. The budget was $40. Don't rewind. 40 In one part of the city, same borough, a million dollars. In another, $40. That's what we call a disparity. White kids in the affluent school, black kids in the $40 school. And I could do that all over Brooklyn. I could do that all over New York City. 
And I could do that all over this region and this country because we have disparities that are racialized. Oh, wait, should I start with education or should I move to housing? Maybe I should move to the wealth gap. The, the wealth gap is a nice way of saying that white families inherit more money than black families. In addition to that, it says that white families have houses and real estate and land. They own stuff in ways that black families don't. In fact, it's 10 times the amount of wealth in white families versus black families. We look at policing. Black folks are about, there's, a four, there's like a 40% chance black folks might get shot if they don't have a gun. 40% of those people are black, but we only make up 13% of the society. Racial disparities. You see, the problem is we have a racist country because our racial disparities have been normalized. They're just another LeBron James who came from a bad place. But isn't it great LeBron James came out? We love LeBron James, but we forget where he came from. And right now, the words racial disparity, the question you have to ask yourself, does God care that there's a disparity in your city? Does he care that there's a disparity in your schools? Disparity of healthcare amongst black and brown and white people in your area. Does he care about that? And I believe he does.